Hello, my friends. We are five mythically modded players with over 40,000 matches of experience. And today we're going to show you the most broken item combos in the game. Itemization is one of the, if not the most important thing in MLBB that dictates your chances of winning. So let's get straight into it. The first item combo we will talk about today is Hunter Strike and War Axe, which is a combo that is especially useful for assassin junglers. You can build these items early on as they are both pretty cheap, so you can ensure a quick rotation and a good amount of penetration on the enemies. But what do these items exactly do? Hunter Strike gives you 80 physical attack, 10% cooldown reduction, 15 physical penetration, and dealing damage to a creep or a hero 5 times in a row give you 50% more movement speed for 3 seconds. While War Axe gives you 40 physical attack, 550 HP, 10% cooldown reduction, and you gain 10 physical attack and 2 physical penetration every second for 3 seconds after dealing damage, which can stack up to 8 times. At max stacks, you also gain 15% movement speed. This makes it possible that War Axe gives you 120 physical attack and 16 physical penetration in total. If you listen closely, you may have noticed that both items give you this same stats, which is why they work so well together as they enhance exactly these stats you need as a jungle assassin. Both these items together can give you up to 200 physical attack, 31 flat physical penetration, 65% movement speed, 550 HP and 20% cooldown reduction. Are you stupid or something? Now combine this with the assassin emblem to add another 16 penetration or even 21 when you use rupture and you have a flat penetration of 52 which is absolutely insane. What? What? To showcase this we have our dear damage bot who has zero physical defense. On both sides we have the exact same physical attack but on the left we have no penetration while we have 51 penetration on the right which means we go deep into the negative defense region. Now let me do a single attack and see the difference. Any more questions why flat penetration is insane especially in the early game against squishy? So insane penetration, insane physical attack, insane movement speed bonus and CD reduction. What do you need more? This combo is great for jungle assassins like Hanzo, Hayabusa and Lancelot so they can rotate around the jungle very quickly and deal a lot of damage early. Get Hunter Strike as first core item before you finish your boots and get Fury Hammer right after you got your jungle boots as it gives you 12 plat flat. What? <laughs> Flat pam. This combo can also be used by fighters who need extra mobility in team fights. For example, Yuzong, Dairoth, or Paquito. Next on our list, we have the combination of Wind Talker with the revamped Hearth Claw, and of course, the Great Dragon Spear. By the way, if you haven't already, make sure to re-download Mobile Legends with Airtight to get up to 30% more diamonds using my code MLGUIDE. After following the simple tutorial in the description or the pinned comment, you can simply buy diamonds to get free app coins that you can use to get more free diamonds. Here I just bought diamonds worth $30 and because of the app coins that I receive, I could get another 275 diamonds for free. Just imagine buying diamonds with the Google Play Store and receiving receive nothing for it. So again, invest the 2 minutes of your time by following the simple tutorial in the description or the pinned comment and get more diamonds for your money. This combo is similar to the War X and Hunter Strike combo as this one also gives you a great amount of movement speed and it can be built early. All items combined cost less than 6000 gold and since this combo is made for crit damage heroes so mainly marksmen, it is pretty easy to get the gold together as a marksman usually goes to the gold lane. I know I got a of myself so let's finally talk about what makes this combo even great. Starting with Wind Talker, it gives you 40% attack speed, 20 fixed movement speed and 10% crit chance. The passive lets you clear minion waves much faster plus gives you a 5% extra movement speed for a short time. The Great Dragon Spear offers you 70 physical attack, 10% CD reduction and 20% crit chance. Plus after casting your ultimate, it will increase your movement speed by 50 15% for 7.5 seconds. This have a 15 seconds cooldown though, so there is no way to get an unlimited movement speed boost with heroes like Clint. And the revamped Pass Claws, RIP Scarlet Phantom by the way. <coughs> so. 
Hard Claws gives you 30 physical attack, 20% attack speed and 20% crit chance. You also get 25% lifesteal and when doing critical strikes it grants you an extra 20% attack speed for 2 seconds. So again as you might realize, these items all increase the same stats which are the most important for crit based heroes. In total this combo grants you 80% attack speed, 100 physical attack, 10% CD reduction, 50% crit chance, 25% lifesteal and 20 movement speed with a 15% boost from the great dragon spear. This combo can be used on almost any marksman who mainly uses basic attacks to benefit from the crit. So it's especially useful for Irithyll who benefited the most from the changes but also other marksmen like Mia, Carrie and Bruno can benefit greatly from this combo. Now there are of course other crit based heroes who also can use this combo. For example Zilong and Alus who also mainly use basic attack. Especially Alus is a great pick for lower ranks as you have the time to scale there. Now every great combo obviously have a counter as well. So whenever you encounter a crit based hero, the combo of dominance ice cream and blade armor will make them cry. Dominance ice cream offers you 500 mana, 70 physical defense and 5% movement speed. While blade armor gives you 90 physical defense, which is the highest amount of physical defense you can get from a single item by the way. These stats are nice of course, but what makes these items great counters are the passive ability. Dominance Ice Cream has a unique passive where it reduces the attack speed of nearby enemy heroes by 70% and it also reduces the HP regen and shield of the enemies by 50%. Blade Armor offers you 20% crit damage reduction followed by another passive where incoming basic attacks will be reflected by 30%. This is calculated before the damage reduction and adds another 20% of your physical defense to the attacker as well. Meaning the higher your physical defense is, the more damage you reflect back. This will also slow the enemy for 15% for 1 second, which can be the key for chasing the marksman who tries to keep the distance. This combo is absolutely amazing for fighters and tanks, but it's probably the most useful for tanky fighters. They will usually be in the backline of the enemy team and because of this hard counter they will give the enemy's marksman a nice dose of PTSD. All tanks can use this combo of course as it's their job to counter the enemy's lineup anyway. And and for fighters you can use it on the bulky ones like Terisla, Balmond, Yuzong and Frederin. You can also use it on backline divers like Dyrov though. Next we have another 2 item combo that is great for tanks and fighters. Guardian Helmet with Oracle. Guardian Helmet offers 1550 HP and plus 20 HP regen. Its passive lets you regenerate 2.5% of your max HP per second, though this will be reduced to 0.5% over 5 seconds after taking damage. Oracle offers you 850 HP, 42 magic defense and 10% cooldown reduction. The passive increases all shield and HP regen effects by 30% which is a perfect counter to all anti heal items like dominance ice cream, sea halberd and necklace of Dura. When using a full tank build with a fighter like Hilda for example, you can easily regenerate 388 HP per second while just standing around. Combine this with her ability to regen HP in a bush and you can regen 698 HP per second. This is amazing for XP laners or roamers who want to stay as long as possible on the battlefield as it's basically impossible for your enemies to escape their presence. This combo is especially useful for tanks like Hylos and Uranus or as already shown for fighters who use a tank build like Hilda or Alo. Now I can already see our dear mage friends sitting patiently in the corner waiting for their combo. We of course have more than just one great combo for you, so let's start with the first one which is Genius Wand with the new item Stadium Scythe or Glowing Wand. Genius Wand in general is an awesome early game item for mages as it offers you 75 magic power, 5% movement speed and a deadly passive where you get 10 magic penetration plus a magic defensive reduction effect. Whenever you deal damage to an enemy, you reduce their magic defense by 3 to 7 for 2 seconds. 
which can stack up to three times so they can reduce it up to 21 points. This item alone lets you easily enter the negative defense territory, as most squishies have a very low magic defense that in the early game, unless they build tough boots. But even then, you can use the assassin emblem which gives you up to 26 hybrid penetration, which means you can get a flat penetration of 57. How OP negative penetration is, I already showed you before, so how can we make this combo even more OP? Combine it with Stalium Scythe or Glowing Wall. The new item Stalium Scythe is essentially a combo of the items Calamity Reaper and Shadow Twin Blade. So the stats from this item are actually kind of crazy. You gain 70 magic power, 10% cooldown reduction, 8% hybrid regen and 6 mana regen. And the passes where within 3 seconds after casting a skill, the caster's next basic attack will deal additional true damage equal to 100 plus 100% magic power. You also gain 10% movement speed for a brief moment. This effect has a 1.5 seconds cooldown meaning you can spam it around like there's no tomorrow. It is a great item for heroes who switch between using skills and basic attack. So mainly heroes who deal magic damage but are no mages. For example Karina or Nathan. Both need that burst damage but also mobility to either kite or chase enemies. Other mages who rather deal continuously damage should better use glowing one though. Glowing one gives you 75 magic power, 400 HP and 5% movement speed. But we look of course for its passive. You deal burn damage for 3 seconds, dealing magic damage equal to 1.5% of the target's max HP per second. You're also increasing the magic damage taken by 2 to 4 stacking up to 6 times. This is again an amazing item to pair with Genius War, as they all reduce the enemy's ability to sustain the incoming magic damage, making you hurt like hell and making anybody cry on the battlefield. Heroes like Valir, Harley, Odette or Gord absolutely thrive with these two items equipped. Now we obviously also have our dear burst mages who wipe the enemies in second and don't need any kind of continuous burn damage. For them, we have the already well known clock of destiny and lightning junction combo. But we're also adding genius wand into the mix as well, as this item is crucial for killing squishy effectively. Clock of Destiny gives you 60 magic power, 500 HP and 600 mana. From its passive you get 20 extra max HP and 4 extra magic power every 20 seconds. This is capped at 15 stacks which gives you an extra 5% magic power and 600 extra mana at full stacks. This is a great item for buying early as it becomes even better over time. And this item works extremely well with Lightning Junction's passive. You get plus 75 magic power, 400 mana and 10% cooldown reduction. And every 6 seconds the next skill deals 50 to 1000 magic damage, which scales with your max mana and can affect up to 3 enemies. Since Clock of Destiny gives you a crap ton of mana, this is an amazing item to have. Now why do we need to add Genius Wand into the mix? Burst mages aim for squishy heroes of course and should never blast their condo randomly at a tank. So the flat pen and magic defense reduction gives you the extra damage you often need to kill a squishy enemy, especially when they have their full HP. Now what about our scaling mage friends like Lunok, Xavier and Sicilian who just wants to spam around their skill? They can essentially use the same combo, but you need to replace Genius One with Enchanted Talisman. It gives you plus 50 magic power, 250 HP, a whopping 20% cooldown reduction and its passive lets you regenerate 15% of your max mana every 10 seconds, while also increasing your max cooldown reduction by 5%. So you can have up to 45% cooldown reduction which is essential for your skill spamming. And the combo of Clock of Destiny and Lightning Junction provides you with enough max mana and the extra damage you often need as your burst abilities are are limited with these heroes, well at least in the early to mid game. And because we really haven't talked enough about mages recently and I secretly hope someone already wrote a comment about it, we of course can't continue without talking about the triple wand combo. Genius wand, glowing wand and the glorious ice cream wand. The combo of those three wands makes mages like Valir absolutely unbearable as he can lock you down with endless lows. 
while burning you into the ground. But it is also a very good combo on heroes like Gord or Chang'e. We all already know how deadly the genius wand and glowing wand combo is, so let's talk about ice cream wand in particular. Which is by the way the most fucking annoying item in the entire goddamn game. I mean, heroes who use it like if are the damn reason slow reduction had to be added to the game. Uh, but anyways. This ice cream stick gives you 75 magic power, 10% spell them, 300 HP and 7% movement speed. And of course, a passive. If you hit an enemy with your skills, you slow the target by 15% for 3 seconds which is capped at 2 stacks. Meaning you can slow people by 30% for 3 seconds straight. And the thing is, this effect has no cooldown. Which means you can slow them to infinity and beyond by just keep activating your skills. That really wants to make the enemy quit the freaking game but <laughs> well they can because when you pair that with heroes who have their own slow effects like even Valir, the enemy would lose a race against the slow. Right. Enough of mages for now. Because now we talk about how to counter one of the heroes I was asked about the most. Leslie with her goddamn true damage. But this combo also works very well against heroes with high burst damage in general. Combine Guardian Helmet and Twilight Armor. We already know what Guardian Helmet gives you, so let's move on to this amazing item called Twilight Armor. Twilight Armor gives you 1200 HP and 20 physical defense, but the real hero is again like always, the passive. Upon taking more than 600 damage in a single instance, the excess damage beyond that amount is reduced by 150 plus 15 percent max HP. Little math exercise. Leslie deals 2000 damage and you have 8000 max HP. How much damage would you take in total? 15 percent of 8000 is 1200. Easy to calculate is 10 percent of 8000 is 800 so 5 percent is obviously 400 and 800 plus 400 is 1200. 1200 plus 150 is 1350. 600 damage you take anyway so there's 1400 damage left you can reduce and as we just calculated we reduce 1350 damage of that so you only take 650 damage into your face. Any more questions? If you want more math, okay probably not, but maybe a video series where we go super deep into the math side of the items, become a MLG family member today or make sure to spam it into the comments. This makes it the perfect item against heroes like Martis, Leslie, Balmond and Aldor. Sadly this effect has a 5 second cooldown but otherwise we could say bye bye to all the burst heroes so meh. <laughs> now you pair it with guardian hammer because you want to increase your max HP of course. But even more important than that is the regen effect. As you can regen the incoming damage in a matter of seconds. This makes you an almost unkillable target for those burst damage hero if you play it smart. Just running into the skills or shot especially Leslie's is still not smart of course. But you can take a huge chunk of damage away from them and still have a good amount of HP left. Which you can then regen pretty fast to take the next wave of damage. If you use this combo as a fighter, you can even add the forgotten item which is Queen's Wings. Queen's Wings provides you with 1000 HP, which on its own is already a great stat, but you also get 10% cooldown reduction and 5% spell damage. The item's passive is again the most important one of course. It's activated when your HP drops below 40% and grants you 20% damage reduction and 35% extra spell damage for 5 seconds. So this effect has a cooldown of 60 seconds. It's still a great item as it reduces the incoming damage even further without any limitations when you get low. This item is great for heroes like Lapu Lapu, Frederin, Terrisla, Yuzong or any sustained fighter who likes to dive into the backline and benefits from spell them. Though never use this item against Leslie as true damage negates the damage reduction effect of this item. Now that we already talk about burst heroes, we need to mention the combo of Blade of the Haptasis, Hunter Strike, Malefic Roar and the Assassin Emblem. I know I know I want to talk about item combos but this emblem is essential for this combo so bite me. This combo is all about burst and being able to kill people as fast as possible. Hunter Strike and the Assassin Emblem was already explained earlier so let's cover Malefic Roar and Blade of the Haptasis in detail. 
Blade of the Hep Disease grants you 70 physical attack and 250 HP. The passive gives you 15 physical penetration and if no damage was taken or dealt within 5 seconds excluding from minions or creeps, this item will let you deal additional 160 plus 40% total physical attack physical damage, making this item perfect for the early game to get some extra damage. Also it's pretty cheap compared to other burst items. Malefic Roar only gives you 60 physical attack as its base stat, but we only care about its passive anyway. I seriously hope by the way that 90% of you already know what it does. It gives you 20% physical penetration and when attacking an enemy it grants you 0.125% oh, that didn't roll off the tongue. extra physical penetration for each point of the enemy's physical defense. This is capped at 40%. This obviously means the more physical defense an enemy has, the more defense you can penetrate with this item. Now, why are these three items so good together? Essentially, it allows burst heroes to deal damage to any kind of hero. Squishy heroes have basically no defense when you attack them. As you penetrate through their thin armor with the flat pen you get from Hunter Strike, Blade of the Aftersees, and the Assassin Emblem. All together give you a flat pen of 51, plus a few extra points from the Malefic War penetration effect. And if the squishy enemy actually builds physical defense, you penetrate a lot of it because of Malefic Roar. This high flat pen is also very useful against tanks, as you can almost negate the physical defense they gain from items like Antique Koras or Dominance Ice Cream. With the effect of Malefic Roar, you can actually deal quite some damage against them. And although burst heroes should obviously focus squishy enemies, often you can't avoid attacking tanks as well. And it's obviously much better when you can actually deal damage against them, right? Now we can make a video about item combos of course if we don't talk about the combo that was literally the name for an entire meta. I of course talk about the trinity build combo consisting of corrosion scythe, demon hunter sword and golden star. This build is amazing for marksmen who want to melt down tanks. Corrosion Scythe gives you 30 physical attack, 5% movement speed and 35% attack speed. Its passive lets your basic attacks gain 80 extra physical damage and slow the target by 8% but this effect is half for ranged basic attacks. It's active for 1.5 seconds and can be stacked up to 5 times. Hitting anyone with basic attack also grants you 6% extra attack speed for 3 seconds which is also capped at 5 stacks. Essentially you can get up to 65% attack speed, which is the highest amount you can get from any item. And the slow helps you to catch enemies or keep them at a certain distance. Next, Demon Hunter Sword gives you 35 physical attack and 25% attack speed. The passive lets your basic attack deal 8% of the enemy's current HP as physical damage and you gain 3% lifesteal for every basic attack and up to 5 stacks. This item is the key to the Trinity Madness as this is the item that allows you to melt tanks like crazy. To tie it all up, we have Golden Star. It gives you 55 physical attack and 15% attack speed. It has two passive effects, but the first one isn't really relevant, as every 1% of crit chance gained is converted into 1% attack speed, meaning crit items won't work with this combo. But the important part is the second passive. After two non-crit basic attacks, the attack speed of the next basic attack is increased by 100%, the attack speed limit is increased to 500% and all basic attack effects are triggered an additional 2 times. Essentially, this item makes your attack fast as fuck and increases the usefulness of your item passive massively. Corrosion Scythe stacks are full after just 3 basic attacks and Demon Hunter Swords passive that deals percentage damage based on the enemy's current HP will be triggered 3 times. With your insane attack speed you trigger this effect multiple times per second and no matter how high the HP of the enemy is, it will be gone in a few seconds. This was essentially the first way to counter the tank meter and made heroes like Carry, Claude and Moskov so strong. Why I am talking in the past form you ask? Well, the tank meta is dead and there is a new meta which took over Mobile Legends. Watch this video to get the full details and be up to date with the current changes. Also a huge shout out to our MLG family members, especially the mythical glory members like Ubu and Kelly. <laughs> My voice still broke. Fuck. <laughs>